various locations via the miracle of Skype, it's the 40th anniversary season of the LTN Hour. Let's talk NASCAR with your host, Todd Bailey, co-hosts Brian Schmidt, PJ Noodleman, and producer Dangerous Dan Margetta. Call the show anytime at 414-421-7901. And now, the creator and host of the fastest hour in radio, Todd Bailing. Well, this doesn't happen very often. We are podcast and internet only today. We appreciate you tuning in on the internet. And uh, for those of you who have downloaded what a week we're looking at. Uh, Todd Bailing, in fact, not just Todd Bailing, the entire gang from LTN is out here in Phoenix, Arizona today. We are spread out in three different locations. Only one of us right now is actually at the racetrack. Uh, I'll start by introducing PJ, who's uh, overlooking the track right now, I guess, right? We are. Uh, Toby and I are upstairs in the uh, suite but he is uh, eating popcorn right now. But, yeah, the uh, activity is already pretty uh, flurry down in the pits. A lot of people I, moving I, around. I would think. And my longtime partners uh, from Wisconsin who have made the trip out here to Brian Schmidt and Dan Margetta are together. And then as soon as the program's over, I guess hop in a car and head for the track, right? Yeah, absolutely. We're in Glendale. Actually, we're overlooking uh, the stadium here. State Farm Insurance Stadium is just out our back window here. Uh, in Glendale. Game today. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So we're going to get out of here before the football people here uh, to see a championship race. What a championship weekend it's been so far. Outstanding racing so far. Yeah, it's been a good time. I mean, a real good time out here. We got a nice little compound here. Brian found a pretty fancy deal here. So we're going to hang out here and then jump in a car to the track. Uh, we, we'll probably go live on a hangover show for that. We can check on, on, uh, uh, on that. Check yeah, great being out here. Hey, I mean, and the weather cooperated. I mean, it's not really hot. It's, it's actually pretty perfect. People um, are complaining it's cold here. Of co- well, they remember they've had triple digits for like seventy-five days, and then I mean over a hundred ten. So uh, you know, eh, when it gets to be seventy-some degrees, they're all dressed like it's uh, Nanook of the North here, and they're trying. You know, <laughs> oh, you must be a snowbird. You got shorts on. Yeah, well, this is summer in Wisconsin, so. Uh, it's been, uh, as we have mentioned, it's been uh, the racing has been absolutely outstanding so far. Um, we've had uh, two different champions crowned yesterday. Justin Allgaier um, was the champion. You wouldn't realize that someone other than than uh, Allgaier actually won the race. Riley Herbst won the race yesterday. Uh, probably will be the uh, last Stewart, or could be the last Stewart Haas car to win a race. We'll see what happens today. But uh, Justin Allgaier, uh, boy, he really did a hell of a job in that car. He drove his ass off and uh, took it, did what he With had to multiple do. Multiple to penalties, it. too. First of all, he overcame problems in in his first practice where he got into some oil up into the wall. They had to work on the car. Then a double whammy penalty during the race. I mean, I thought he was screwed, and uh, it, <laughs> he might have thought that himself. But, Dan, those cautions can come at really good times sometimes. Oh, he caught a really good caution late in that deal because he was – you know, they stayed out. Everybody pitted uh, to kind of work themselves back somewhat in contention with, you know, a desperation hope for a caution. And it was coming down to the point where he's going to have to pit under green and, and throw it away when the five car hit the fence in turn one. Anthony Alfredo caught the, the fence and brought that caution out. And that just saved his whole race and put him right back in contention with everybody. And the car was pretty decent. Uh, I don't think I've ever seen a guy work that hard for a championship for all all race long you think that whole race as a whole it was pretty crazy that way and i think it's the seventh time there you know on thursday we were talking a lot and a lot of people didn't want to ask the question but it was out there okay it's your seven times your seventh time here when are we going to finally get it done because usually when it got down to greenway checker stuff i I thought justin was too nice in the past and then like nice justin kind of was put on the shelf for a little bit and he kind of and he drove like he wanted to win the thing yeah i mean riley herbst riley herbst won that race because riley herbst was going to be what Riley Herbst does. He's gonna he was gonna literally move Justin on the last lap. Justin was leading when they took the white flag. Justin was leading down the back straightaway. And Riley Herbst, who who led the majority of the race, I think he led 127 of those laps yesterday, said said in the post race that, you know, I was gonna move him no matter what, you know, and it's like fortunately Justin was smart enough and they asked him in his part of the, the post race, did you know Riley was behind him? He goes, Yes. He hit me like multiple times all day. So as soon as I saw him <laughs> that close, he's like, Go ahead. 
He says, I want I want to win the race too, but I want to win the championship more. And that was a and, smart move because he says, otherwise, who knows what would have happened? Probably would have been sent in the wall. Well, and Austin Hill was so concerned with Cole Custer behind him, he just totally missed it when Allgaier slipped right around both of them. Yeah, yeah, that restart before that was it. Was, the whole thing was just a crazy ending to that race, and but that's the Xfinity series. I mean, the Xfinity series multiple times here ha- has had uh, spectacular races. You remember the Daniel Hemrick one from 2021? I mean, th- those cars on that type of track that is probably the best racing NASCAR has. And as great as that race was for that championship, it was a yawner on Friday night when Ty Majeski unloaded the truck. He was two tenths faster than anybody else in the first practice. They didn't even spend much time working on the thing. Isn't it was crazy how how great those like dominant races are when your guy's the dominator. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And when you're finally when you finally can take a, a breath and go, oh my God, he's got the greatest truck I've ever seen him have here. And uh, went out and won the pole and dominated the race to win his first ever Truck Series championship. Ty will be joining us later in the program, so make sure you you hang around long enough to hear uh, his comments. And uh, uh, he joins Ted Musgrave, Travis Quapel, and Johnny Sauter as uh, Wisconsin Truck Series champions. And uh, uh, great company to be in and certainly tipped his cap to all the other drivers from Wisconsin uh, in the press conference. Uh, and in fact, PJ, it was really neat to see him acknowledge Toby uh, at his press conference the other night. It was uh, all, were very heartwarming to hear. It was just cool in general to see him pay tribute to his short track roots. I mean, not only did he acknowledge Tobe, but he also acknowledged the Kowicki Driver Development Program yes. and the huge role that was to springboard his career. Uh, it was the money that he won from that that allowed them to build the car that led to that phenomenal debut year in 2014 where he was Rookie of the Year and champion for the Midwest Tour. Um, just pretty cool. And he's pretty much grown up right in front of our eyes, and uh, he's not done yet, folks. He's 30 years old, and he's going to be doing this for a while, and it's fun to fun to have watched his career progress for sure. And uh, there was another champion uh, this week. Uh, the uh, ARCA race ran in the morning on Friday. Boy, it takes a real race fan to have got up and gone in to watch a morning race. <laughs> and my partners were there. Uh, it was a battle of the itches. Connor Zilich beat William Swalich uh, in that one. And uh, Zilich, it seems like a theme, you know. Um, he he beats Swalich pretty consistently. Um, the fan favorite in Wisconsin, Sean Hingarani, uh, won his second straight ARCA championship. Go ahead. West. Man. ARCA West Series championship. West. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. That's right. There's a lot of ARCAs, aren't there? Three. Yes. Yeah. East, West, and National. And whatever Nash. they call the other one. The, the, uh, the Menard Series, apparently, I guess. Yeah, they're all ARCA Menard Series. You got ARCA Menard Series East, ARCA Menard Series West, and the ARCA Menard Series. This was the West. Arkham and Art Series proper, we'll call the third one. Yeah, we, it, it would be nice to get into uh, the race last week at Martinsville. We'll do that later into the program. Uh, what all happened last week between the bees, uh, Blaney, Byron, Bell, and Bubba. Um, but you <laughs> heard by now how how it's all uh, come down to fines, a hundred thousand dollar fines for drivers and teams, fifty driver and owner points, and one race suspensions for crew chief spotters and one team executive per team. I mean to tell you that was a big deal, uh, or as Mark Martin called it, a shit show, uh, and it turned out to be that way. In fact, in NASCAR's state of the sport speech, they acknowledged Mark Martin's post when he called it a shit show. It was absolutely outstanding. We're glad you're tuned in. Uh, when we come back, this has been a very bad week for uh, for us on this program and for racing in general with a couple of very important losses. We're going to talk to an old friend of ours, Father Dale Gruba, when we come back. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. 
When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. The checkered flag is waved over the racing season at the Fair Park in Plymouth. Congratulations to the champions, Brad Miller, Will Source, Travis Schmidt, and Ben Schmidt. Plymouth Dirt Track Racing thanks all the drivers and pit crews for their ongoing dedication. The loyal, dedicated track workers are the best at what they do every week. A big thank you also to the many business for their sponsorships and of course the fans who make it all possible the green flag will wave for another season next spring we'll see you there if you're a fan of our Wisconsin sports teams, here's the perfect podcast for you. The Larravee and LePay podcast with two Hall of Fame broadcasters. Wayne Larravee, the voice of the Green Bay Packers, and Matt LePay, the voice of Wisconsin Badgers football and men's basketball. Together, bringing you insights and guests talking Packers, Badgers, Brewers, Bucks, and more. Listen to the Larravee and LePay podcast. Available anytime on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Presented by UW Credit Union. Here for every you. As uh, as it's no big surprise that this has been a bad week. For those of you who have been listening on the internet for a while, um, Bob Schneider Jr. Uh, is a r- regular contributor to the program and and uh, called us usually once a week. And um, there's never been a, a bigger uh, promoter, uh, lover of racing, and, uh, and he did his best to uh, to further the sport. And um, uh, so what is Bob Schneider Jr., who passed away this week at the age of 60, and uh, Bobby Allison have in common, who passed away the, the Hall of Famer and one of the all-time greatest drivers ever to zip into a suit, um, the, the the common denominator between the two is, was our friend Father Dale Gruba, the uh, retired priest from Princeton, Wisconsin, who is, uh, you might think of him as being retired, but he works as much now as he ever did. Father Gruba joins us, and uh, Father Gruba, first of all, uh, from all of us, we know what a lousy week you've had to deal with, and um, uh, our best to you, and I, I certainly hope that... Uh, um, you, uh, there are a lot of people that are thinking of you as much as uh, Bobby Allison or uh, Bob Schneider Jr. this week. Yeah, thank you very much for that because you know both of those people were certainly instrumental in my life and and in my career. Uh, you know, Bobby, of course, did a lot for me to open doors. You know, in the early part of my career. Uh, I met him, and then, you know, he was, he, at that time, NASCAR racing was a so, southern sport, so you had to have somebody that said, this guy's okay, and Bobby was that person in my life that would go to a Dale Earnhardt or somebody like that and say, this guy's okay, and then that friendship just, you know, kept going and growing stronger and stronger and stronger, and I know Bonnie uh, last night when I talked to her and offered my sympathy said, you know, he really loved you. And, and uh, you know, the same was true of me. I really loved him. And, you know, Sleeveless Bob, we, you know, we, we were just photographers, race photographers when the pandemic struck. And I had to try and figure out how I was going to reach people. And between Bob and I, we decided to start videotaping masses we'd never we'd always done like still photography we'd never done videos so you know but you know bob just became more and more and more involved in my life in many aspects of it the the video part was one thing but you know he was that person i could always rely on 
and go to if I needed something done. And, and he would do it willingly, you know, and just never, ever uh, complain. And, you know, just to kind of tell you how much he meant to my life, when I couldn't figure out a television set or, or I couldn't figure out something on my computer, I would always call Bob. Mm -hmm. And about <laughs> two weeks ago, I called him and I said, Bob, I can't figure out my TV set. I said, these dumb things should come with a Snyder so that everybody that buys a TV set gets a Snyder with it. And we were, you know, that was the thing we were talking back and forth about for two weeks was, well, does this need a Snyder or doesn't it need a Snyder? But God. I'll tell you, I'm going to be lost without him. You know, I saw you and Bob together at Lacrosse. You had a, a, a you were selling some of your books, uh, and uh, as usual, yeah. uh, he was sitting right next to you helping out. Uh, he was very visible, uh, especially recently with you. Yeah, he certainly was. And, you know, like we were down at the library in Ryle, and he would always handle that end of it, you know, the selling of books and talking to people who were there, you know, interested in purchasing books. I would be doing a talk at the same time, and we just worked so well together. Uh, and you just, when a person like that is no longer in your life, you know, you just really miss them. This has been, uh, uh, what a week, uh, and then the great Bobby Allison passes away. Uh, you actually did have a kind of a heads up that this was, um, that he wasn't doing well, right? Yeah, and that, that, you know, that was, again, something I was living with. You know, Bonnie had called me earlier in the week and said that his health was declining rapidly and that hospice had been called in and, you know, it wasn't going to be very long, maybe... 24 hours, 36 hours. So besides dealing with the loss of, of Sleeveless Bob, there was that other shoe that was going to drop, and it did drop uh, yesterday afternoon. Uh, so kind of just, it was, it, was that, it was just a struggle to have one person that passed away, another one that you were praying for that was about to pass away. Unbelievable. And I don't suppose it was any kind of uh, coincidence that uh, Bobby Allison uh, was just awarded that uh, that race win from 1971, which broke his tie for fourth on the all-time list. I don't know if you got a chance to talk to him uh, since then, but I have a feeling that was a very important day for our Hall of Fame friend. Yeah, I didn't get a chance to talk to him, but I'm sure that it was because... Ever so often that would come up in a course oh, yeah. of a conversation about, about yeah, quite vehemently at times, about mm -hmm. how he deserved to have that win and, and break that tie. Uh, he, he, uh, Bobby Allison had a great history in Wisconsin, too. We shouldn't uh, underestimate that. He, uh, he, he was a uh, test driver for, um, uh, what was the name of that outfit along uh, 41 up there in, in the valley? Uh, uh, where they Mercury Marine. Mer Mercury Marine, yeah. He Car worked there. Yeah, it was and Carl Kiefer. Yeah, he was, he, he was, was the there. And the of course, time. he drove for, for uh, Jerry Gunderman and uh, many short track events um, in the middle of his career, too, uh, out of Wisconsin. So, um, you know, he's he certainly had his, his uh, effect. And, and being a longtime friend with uh, Miles Melius was a pretty big deal. Bobby considered Miles uh, the Mouse Melius as his hero uh, coming to Wisconsin and watching him race all those years. So um, uh, the ties are strong. Father Grubel, we're thinking about you. Um, please... Uh, uh, our, our best to you and uh, try to hang in there. And, uh, and also, what, do you have any immediate plans how your uh, uh, podcasts are going to change now that Bob won't be helping? I don't, I, you know, we're, we're continuing on. The, uh, Lynn, who is the guitarist, is for the moment, you know, kind of putting together uh, the, fortunately, we had, one mass in the can, the one that's playing this week. But then next week and the week after, uh, we'll be out uh, starting all over. And I think for the moment, Lynn is going to try and take over that camera spot. But, 
you know, I'm looking for somebody to help out in that regard. Uh, Everybody needs. We'll get it Schneider. done because we've got you know we've got a lot of people. You, you could say, well, this is the time to kind of throw in the towel and say, you know, it's come to a natural end. But you know, we've got over two thousand people on Facebook, at, let alone uh, and on YouTube, and they're scattered all over the world. They aren't just in the United States. So we've got people in the Philippines and Bangladesh and oh, and okay. uh, all over. So. You you've got you know you you don't want to just tell those people it's done because yeah. they kind of rely on your message. Uh, Father Gruba, thanks for joining us today, and uh, we're thinking about you, and uh, hope to talk to you in the very near future. Take care. Thanks for being part of my life. All right, Father Dale Gruba, uh, the racing padre and uh, and famous photographer and writer. We're going to be uh, back in just a couple of minutes. Hanging there with us. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to mulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com friends of racing for many years pmf landscape supply in west bend miller sales and service of random lake is where to go for a trailer no matter what you're hauling tom and jerry miller have been selling trailers from bnb trophy and bravo for over 50 years quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and k since 1939 home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt car of Brad Miller. That's Miller's Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them 920-994-4358. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs. All backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is outfitted with the -the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive the Milwaukee Admirals will try to continue their good start to this season Sunday when they travel to Chicago to take on the Wolves. To the right hash marks, dropping it off. Schaefer at the right circle to the left for Hannes Grossa. Center point, Gravel, score! Pre-game coverage at 2.30, face-off at 3 on the Big 920 and your iHeartRadio app. Well, once again, Dan, I don't understand legal uh, ramblings, and you do. You uh, uh, let's put it this way: more more than the rest of us, perhaps. Uh, and you followed what uh, the court proceedings were in the great big lawsuit this week. And uh, uh, if you want to make it simple for me, uh, why don't you do that? Yeah, we. I mean, it happened this week. Real quick before we go, I want to throw a quick couple stories about Bob Schneider and and Bobby Ellis. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, Bob Schneider, if you remember back in, in 2010, they had that first road uh, course test at, at Road America for NASCAR. And I had just gotten my Mustang. I had it like two weeks earlier. And I had it up there. We just parked on the side of the track. Well, Bob fo- took a picture of it, and he Photoshopped it in the tires and put some post up there and said I ran it in the tires. It was it was totally bogus. I didn't have it on the racetrack. But the next week, all kinds of people were, prominent people were telling me how sorry they felt for me for wrecking my car at Road America and ever did. It was kind of a joke we had running through after that. And and Bobby Allison was my first NASCAR autograph. I was 15 years old, and I could barely talk. I was shaking so much when I met him. And then we had our first Daytona 500. Uh, we did our show out there. We had Bobby Allison on, and he came over and, and talked to us. And right. I told him how excited I was to be there because it was my first 500. And he talked to us, and then he walked away, and he turned around, and he came back, and he's like, 
you make sure you come back now. And I thought that was one of the coolest moments I ever had, had in radio oh, on that deal, uh, having that. But the uh, the legal thing this week, they had the hearing for the injunction. It was denied. Uh, they, they're not going to get a preliminary injunction to keep their charters going forward. And the decision was kind of a not, not a total loss for the teams. I mean, obviously the injunction got denied, but the judge also agreed to expedite the discovery in the case, saying it had merit. So he wants to kind of fast track this. His reasoning for for denying the injunction, what he said, Daytona is not till February, so you, you didn't show immediate harm now, which I'm not sure he understands completely because you got to have all your stuff set up sponsor wise and that before you get to Daytona. I realize it's a couple months away, but all that stuff's getting done now, and I don't think the judge understood that. But he also said he's going to expedite the, the, the case to try to get it fast track to get done by then. So that's a kind of a win for them. Now, if you see this week, uh, Brian and I, we, we sat on a couple press conferences, Denny Hamlin was in there. And if you remember before, the rhetoric was, we're going to run as an open team no matter what, even if we don't have a charter. They kind of use that against them in court. And so I think that the, the the rhetoric has changed from the team side because they asked Denny if you're going to be at Daytona, and now they're saying it's to be determined that the 2311 cars may not be there. And he asked, and a lot of people said, well, what if Tyler Reddick wins the championship? You know, what happens? Your champion's not going to be in Daytona? And, you know, Denny said, hey, that happened before. Yeah, the 78 car didn't show up the next year after they won a championship, so he kind of just scoffed at it and said, that it is what it is. Um, also, though, uh, Reddick becomes a free agent, doesn't he? Well, that's kind of came out, too, as it looks like there is some stuff out there that said that Reddick can become a free agent if they don't have a charter. I'm not saying he will, but there is that opportunity possibility that they could lose him to somewhere else same with sponsors apparently some sponsor contracts i'm not sure if it's built in a contract that says they have to have a charter but there was some talk that that there is that out for them if they want it out uh if they don't have this so i right now i think nascar's got the upper hand and i think you can kind of tell because their you know their comment is we're not going to negotiate the media on this whereas the teams are saying we we not may not be in daytona they're kind of going through the media so i think right now nascar's kind of got the upper hand it'd be nice to get them all on the same page uh, because you kind of got to be to go forward. It's not doing any good to be separate like this. <sighs> they uh, deal with this all the time. Even at the press conference, you had a NASCAR spokesman uh, introducing uh, Hamlin, and uh, they kind of had an interesting uh, little look back and forth. Oh, yeah, because he was the guy was, that was in court. It was Mike Ford, uh, who was like the director of race communications or something, yeah. his official title. But he was, yeah, on one side in court early in the week and Denny was on the other side. So it was kind of awkward that way. And, and uh, they were asking about the case. And Denny mentioned that he claimed he got sued and he was 11 years old because he was riding his bike and he got hit by a car and the driver sued him. Uh, and, and they kind of laughed about it and said, well, what did they sue you for? He said, I don't know, some kind of mental anguish thing or something like that. And then the NASCAR guy said, well, I sure know what that's like. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Uh, they're, what they're doing right now is positioning basically, right? They're, they're, they're trying to, to, when they, when this finally hits the fan with the judge in front of the judge, they, everybody wants to be, uh, as much defense as they can. I, Dan, I don't know if it's you or me, but I, it seems like this is headed for the great big, oh yeah. Remember back in the day we actually got, or somebody thought they were going to sue us a little bit. Ha ha. <laughs> that didn't happen, and it never will. Um, this is as close as they're ever going to get to to being sued because I got a this the strangest feeling that this is all going to go away. Best interest for everybody, it would be to go away to come some kind of agreement. I'm at the point now. That's that's one of the questions I probably wish would have been asked of, of Danny was you know at what point from the team side does this you know do you have to win this or is there some kind of way you can you know give a little to, to find a common ground and on nascar sides would you will you give a little because we already the deadline's gone you know they they the other people signed up um do they, they even a, have a mediator involved i mean did they ever go that route to have a mediator? i think they did through all the negotiations and that's how it got to this point where the other teams got to a point they can accept it and these two teams didn't and that's kind of where we're, we're here um i think they I, almost need to bring a mediator back in now or, or maybe. I mean, they, they should. Um, on the other hand, you know, maybe, how does NASCAR approach it? I, 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 right now, I think they're kind of winning. Um, do they they want to make a statement here? I mean, they kind of got pushed around with Kyle Larson not running the 600, remember? And then they eventually acquiesced and said, okay, we'll do it. I mean, at what point do they say, hey, we're going to put our foot down and, and not? 
Yeah, it's uh, what a can of worms. And we've got until Daytona 500 Sundays, apparently, to get this straightened out, even though we all know that's getting a little late for that. We're glad you're tuned in. We've, we've got a champion going to be joining us right after these. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. The checkered flag is waved over the racing season at the Fair Park in Plymouth. Congratulations to the champions, Brad Miller, Will Source, Travis Schmidt, and Ben Schmidt. Plymouth Dirt Track Racing thanks all the drivers and pit crews for their ongoing dedication. The loyal, dedicated track workers are the best at what they do every week. A big thank you also to the many businesses for their sponsorships and, of course, the fans who make it all possible. The green flag will wave for another season next spring. We'll see you there. From racing engines to street engines, long blocks to turnkey packages, or complete custom engines, just ask and Wagner Automotive can fill your needs, all backed by many years of racing experience. These years of experience have provided reliability and performance that customers need to win races. Wagner's has been building championship winning engines for top teams from NASCAR to short tracks in your backyard. This expertise has carried over to street engines they supply to top custom car builders. The Wagner Company, in the heart of Wisconsin, is outfitted with the state-of-the-art machinery necessary to design, manufacture, build, and test custom engines and their accessory parts. Dyno services are independently available for anyone needed to test their engine. Wagner's company can also provide you or your company with production CNC machining or welding services. All your questions and requests are handled personally by Casey Wagner. Just give us a call at 920-394-3557 or visit our website at Wagner Automotive if you're a fan of our Wisconsin sports teams, here's the perfect podcast for you. The Larravee and LePay podcast with two Hall of Fame broadcasters, Wayne Larravee, the voice of the Green Bay Packers, and Matt LePay, the voice of Wisconsin Badgers football and men's basketball. Together, bringing you insights and guests, talking Packers, Badgers, Brewers, Bucks, and more. Listen to the Larravee and LePay podcast, available anytime on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Presented by UW Credit Union. Here for every you. Well, I have to admit, I uh, got a little choked up when I got to see our Wisconsin's latest NASCAR champion, Ty Majeski, flip that truck around and do a Kawicki victory lap because I was there in the stands in Phoenix to see the first one, and I got to see Ty Majeski do it on Friday night, and the champion joins us now. Uh, what a great day for uh, your fans, but uh, for uh, a guy whose career at sometimes you weren't real sure where it was going, here you are, the latest NASCAR champion. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. It uh, it means a ton to, to carry that Wisconsin flag, obviously. Uh, you know, Wisconsin has produced so many great race car drivers and, and so many race, great race car drivers that, haven't gotten a shot in the upper levels of, of racing or NASCAR. So just, uh, yeah, very, very excited to, to carry the tradition on. Uh, there's been so many pioneers bef- before myself, and uh, it's, like I said, my honor to, to carry that Wisconsin flag for everybody. Um, very special moment to be able to, uh, you know, do that Polish victory lap in honor of Alan Kowicki. He Obviously, Phoenix was, was the place where, where he first did that. And, um, yeah, it was something that, that was really a full circle moment, uh, winning the, the inaugural, you know, KDDP program in 2015. And then, uh, and then to be able to, like I said, make it kind of come full circle, win a championship out in Phoenix and, uh, and do the Polish victory lap at the same place. Just, uh, a special night all around. And, uh, what I feel like is a, a huge win for, uh, for Wisconsin short track racing. So Ty, Ty, go ahead. Ty, talk about talk about the weekend you had here. I mean, you unloaded the truck. It was you know fast in practice, right right up until the end. I think Corey Heim might have clicked off a lap right at the end. Um, you put it on the pole. Um, the first stage, Corey got you one time there, but then after that, that thing was just dead on the whole the whole night. I mean, 
can you can you ask for a better dream night to have a truck that good? No, it was, it was really flawless, and it, it's funny. Um, you know, my wife and I were talking about it. Um, for anybody that knows her, knows that she's she gets pretty nervous, and for some reason, um, both of us had we were just super relaxed all week. Um, I don't know what it was. Uh, I, I, I always have confidence going into any race, but for some reason, you know, throughout practice and then, you know, Thursday night after practice and Friday morning of the race, I don't know. It was, I was just, I I just kind of knew that we were going to have a really good shot. And obviously you you can't ever guarantee a win, but I don't know. We were just relaxed and we just felt, you know, calm and like, uh, just felt like, Today was our day, and, uh, and it sure turned out to be that way. So. Do you think, that's right, Ty, that's that right. having been here in 2022 and, and things didn't go, so I think you were almost overly conservative in 2022, was it that experience that maybe just lent it to being so relaxed this time? Could have been. I think that was definitely part of it, just understanding. And it's not only you know the, the pressure of the race, it's just the, the whole process of the entire week. Um, you know, with all the media obligations that, uh, that I, that I showed up to, um, you know, <laughs> you know, just what about that? Going, Can we talk yeah, about that? Yeah, yeah sure. Why not? $12,500 you got to pay so you could vote. Yeah. You know, uh, I don't know if there was, you know, I'm hearing that some, you know, some NASCAR folks are saying that they didn't know that it was about to vote. So that, that it was for voting. I don't know if there was a miscommunication. I personally had very little communication with NASCAR, um, if any, before I was actually given the fine. So I'm not sure what was what was said and what wasn't said. But regardless, after they you know assessed the fine, they knew it was to vote. We, I was you know we were all very vocal about it on Twitter. So you know there was opportunities for them to. Um, I don't know, you know, go back on their penalty. Obviously there was, they didn't, you know, if it's true, they, they may have not known why I missed. Um, but after they, they did, and I felt like, you know, with everything going on, it would have been a big win for them to just say, well, we didn't, you know, we didn't know, you know, if it was to vote, you know, which I have proof of, you know, we're going to go back on it, but they decided not to do that. So we decided to appeal at that point and uh, I'm not sure when the hearing is going to be, but yeah, it'll be interesting to see how it turns out. Well, and I've seen some people squawk about, oh, well, you should have done early voting. And your answer to that is what? Well, I, first of all, I've always been an in, in-person in vote on Election Day guy. I've always done that my entire life. I've never done any, you know any early voting. And, you know, I want to physically slip my ballot into the machine and watch it be counted. Um, I'm not insinuating anything, but I feel like that's, you know, I want to make sure my vote is counted and is counted correctly, and uh, that's what I believe in, and that's why I decided to uh, to vote on election day. And I, you know, that's a, a constitutional right. No one can tell you when or how to vote, whether there's a, a media day on the election day or not. I still have that right, so we'll uh, we'll see what happens. <laughs> well, and again, I can't be stressed enough. It wasn't necessarily your role to have to let NASCAR know. I mean, that's. Thor Sport has people for that, and if there was a miscommunication, like you said, so be it. Uh, but I think, yeah, they've you're, had you're the, miscommunications the before. You know, that, that's, that's not new. But well, either way, um, we're just totally um, happy to finally see the perseverance that you have put in your career to finally have it pay off and have everything go your way. Um, showing up with a weapon like you had didn't hurt one little bit. And uh, uh, kudos to uh, Joe Shear and uh, uh, for, for actually, you guys, if you're saving one truck, that was the one to save no right kidding. there. Hey, you know, Ty, and, and, also, and the funny, p- the funny part about oh, that yeah. truck is that was, uh, that was truck number 91. So, that was built brand new last year uh, for Milwaukee, and uh, it hasn't finished outside. I think the worst it finished this year is fourth at Gateway. So, uh, yeah, just a, a whole full circle moment. Uh, Thor Sport Racing truck number 91 wins the first championship. Obviously, late model number is 91, so pretty cool. 
That is very cool. Your whole team, though, I mean, you guys, you got a new Jackman, didn't you? Or what was the whole situation with the pit crew? Because your pit crew was spot on. I would say. They did phenomenal. You know, uh, unfortunately, um, you know, racing is a, uh, is, a, is a result sport, right? It's a competitive sport. And if things aren't up to par, you know, uh, we, we feel like that, you know, there may need may need to be changes. And, and uh, our, our first Jackman, he did a great job. We just felt like we were uh, just a little bit behind some of the other crews that we, were, we knew we were going to be racing in Phoenix. So we made a Jackman change. And the Jackman is, is really the quarterback of the entire pit crew. He's, he is the uh, limiting factor on, on, on the speed of the pit stop because he's got multiple jobs. He's got to uh, you know, carry the left rear tire, jack the car up, uh, or, or the rears, I'm sorry, he carries the rears, uh, and, uh, and also jacks the truck. So he's got the most work out of any, out of any, uh, person. So he, he's the guy that limits the, uh, the speed. So, um, yeah, we needed to make a change there and, and, and the picture was on it. They did a fantastic job. And, uh, the Jack man that was with us for, uh, 21 of the 23 races, uh, got to share uh, the victory lane celebration as well. So both both of our Jack men were there, um, and and they both deserved to celebrate for sure. Well, I know the the one that you had working was certainly a spark in the way that he's even a good dancer. Saw him probably dancing the hardest out of anybody in your crew in victory lane. Fantastic. Well, uh, on behalf of all of us, man, uh, congratulations. It's going to be fun introducing you next year. I'll tell you that much as uh, NASCAR's newest champion. Hey, uh, good luck, and uh, we'll, we'll talk to you in the near future, my friend. Appreciate it, guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. The latest NASCAR champion, Ty Majeski. We're going to take a break and come back with you. Hang in there with us. Fall has arrived, but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies. And EMF Landscape Supply in West Bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily. From premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to EnviroMulch in red, gold, chocolate brown, and black colors. EMF also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite, as well as field stone, topsoil, and compost. For all your landscaping needs, visit PMF Landscape Supply, 5470 River Road in West Bend. Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. Miller Sales and Service of Random Lake is where to go for a trailer no matter what you're hauling. Tom and Jerry Miller have been selling trailers from B&B, Trophy, and Bravo for over 50 years. Quality and integrity is what put them on the map on the corner of 57 and K since 1939. Home of the number 89 dirt and asphalt cars of Brad Miller. That's Miller Sales and Service. It's where to go for a trailer just 20 minutes north of Milwaukee. Call them 920-994-4358. The checkered flag is waved over the racing season at the Fair Park in Plymouth. Congratulations to the champions Brad Miller, Will Source, Travis Schmidt, and Ben Schmidt. Plymouth Dirt Track Racing thanks all the drivers and pit crews for their ongoing dedication. The loyal, dedicated track workers are the best at what they do every week. A big thank you also to the many business for their sponsorships and of course the fans who make it all possible the green flag will wave for another season next spring we'll see you there the milwaukee admirals will try to continue their good start to this season sunday when they travel to chicago to take on the wolves to the right hash marks dropping it off Schaefer at the right circle to the left for anastrosa center point gravel score pre-game coverage at 230 face off at three on the big 920 and your iheart radio app TN Hour presents Dirt on the Dirt with Brian Schmidt. Getting down to the nitty gritty on the dirt track season here. Only one big event this past weekend, and it was in Charlotte, North Carolina. It was the 2024 World Finals at the dirt track at Charlotte Motor Speedway. We'll start Thursday night. The World of Outlaw Case Construction Late Model uh, Series was there. $12,000 to win feature, and Ricky Thornton Jr. picked up the first one. World of Outlaw NOS Engineering Sprint Car Series. David Gravel grabbed the win. And the Super Dirt Car Series Big Block Modifieds Thursday night went to Tim Fuller. They re-racked it and restacked it and did it all again on Friday night. 
For the Case Construction Late Models, Bobby Pierce grabbed the win. He did not fare real well Thursday night, so after winning Friday night, he was 22 points behind Brandon Shepard going into Saturday night's finale to try to win the championship. Remember, he had a big penalty back at Volusia that cost him, I think, well over 100 points, so put him behind the eight ball. The World of Outlaw NOS Engineering Sprint Car Series, Carson Macedo won Friday night's event, and in the Super Dirt Cut Series, Big Block Modifieds, Matt Williamson was your winner. That brings us to last night, the finale finale for the World fina- World Finals. For the World of Outlaw Late Models, $25,000 to win. Chris Madden grabbed the win. Bobby Pierce started on the pole, had a flat tire while being in front, had a change of tire, finished, I believe, 18th, and Brandon Shepard finished like 10th, I believe. So Brandon Shepard is your 2024 World of Outlaw Late Model Series champion. In the sprint cars, Tyler Courtney was your feature winner. David Gravel is the 2024 champion. He actually wrapped that up on Friday night with his with his uh, top the top five finish. And in the Super Dirt Car Series Big Block Modifieds, Anthony Perego grabbed the feature win, and the 2024 champion was Matt Williamson. So that wraps up everything for the World of Outlaws. They'll be back in action come January at Volusia. That is everything for this week. And on the pavement side of things, last Sunday was the All-American 400 at Nashville, Super or Fairground Speedways. Uh, the ASA Stars National Tour was there. Jake Garcia was the winner. Uh, some notables, Casey Roderick was second. He ended up being the ASA Stars National Tour champ. Dawson Sutton was third. Gio Ruggiero was fourth. Stephen Nassi, fifth. Austin Nason, great finish for him, sixth. Cole Butcher was 14th. Derek Thorne, 21st. Boris Yerkovic, 24th. And Michael Hind was 25th. On Friday here at um, at Phoenix, the Arkham Menards West Series ran, as we've been talking earlier. Connor Zilich was the winner. Uh, Swalich was second, and Sean Higginori was third, and he ended up being the Arkham Menards West champion for the second straight year. Last night also, uh, down at New Smyrna Speedway, they ran the late mo- or the Pro Late Model 100. It's prelude to the Governor's Cup. George Phillips was the winner in that, and today will be the Governor's Cup. At New Smyrna Speedway, Gavin Bochelle is on the pole. Stephen Nassi qualified third, and Gio Ruggiero was seventh on time. And uh, we'll see what happens there. No real Midwesterners representing down there this year. Hmm. Unbelievable. Um, there was, uh, uh, last week at Martinsville, uh, it was... It was difficult to watch. First of all, it was really great that uh, Blaney showed that he had that much um, savvy on a short track. I, I just never knew he was that. Uh, I don't. Dan, does he, has he had a win before at Martinsville? Because yeah, last year he did the same thing. Wanted to get in the did. final four to win the championship. He actually had really good oh. finishes the last ten races at Martinsville. They've all been like around top fives. Well, he certainly uh, flexed his muscles last week and and did it. But the problem wasn't so much with Blaney uh, showing that he deserved to be in the final four. Well, the problem was the politics from Chevrolet and Toyota people. Uh, the Chevrolet people set uh, made sure that the one and the three cars ran side by side behind William Byron, so no one could pass him and thereby lose a point and make the playoffs that way. Uh, which you know, come on, I never would have noticed it if they didn't bring it up on TV. They must have NASCAR must have a department that sits around listening for this kind of thing to happen. Uh, boy, what a job that must be. At the same time, the Toyota people tell Bubba, it's time to pretend you have a flat tire and let Bell buy you because he's going to need the point. And uh, when when uh, Christopher Bell got around Bubba's fake flat, uh, he, he lost control and hit the wall. He didn't let up. The guy's trying to make it into the playoffs. So do you suppose he would go? it would go through his head that he would think about, oh, they didn't want us to, to uh, do the Ross Chastain move, so maybe I shouldn't put the, my foot to the floor and try to go as fast as I can here. No, it, he did it anyway, and they penalized him for it, and he's not in the playoffs. He is one pissed-off race car driver. You guys uh, saw his press conference yeah. yesterday, didn't you? Yeah, he said he feels cheated. He should be in the in the playoffs. He said he thought his reasoning was that the Chevy teams, you know, manipulated the race uh, by running uh, that blockade for William Byron, and that's what caused the bubble issue with the Toyota. They had to respond to that, and it started with them. 
Um, maybe he has a point. It happens everywhere through. I'm surprised that we all knew that was going on. Was it Kozlowski that was behind them? I, I think if that was Dale Earnhardt Sr., he would have moved him. You know, I mean, if, if you don't like what's going on in front of you and they're, they're pulling stuff like that, well, then you got a bumper at Martinsville. Yeah, and, and it was it was asked by several different drivers. I mean, we saw Denny's uh, media availability yesterday. We saw it on Thursday at the media availability. He's asking these guys if there's anything you can do about it. And like Denny said yesterday, he goes, the biggest contributor monetary-wise to these teams is the manufacturers. You're, you're going to have this with manufacturers. I don't know how you keep it from happening. I mean, when the amount of money they're pumping in, we saw it firsthand with Ford. I mean, we got we got to look at it on Thursday. Uh, some of the stuff that Ford has going on with you know all their different teams, how they're together and everything. There is a lot of money to be made there, and these teams uh, work together. I don't know how you I don't know how you police it. I mean, I I don't. And and the driver said it too. I don't know how you do it. I mean, we had it yesterday, but it, it was going on yesterday. But that was racing, and the fans loved it. So there's two different sides to it. You see last week where it's kind of sucks because they're blocking, and you see yesterday where the guys are racing the Ford guys, and it put on a heck of a show. It, the Off only the time, way. the only time it makes a difference is when it's coming down to the championship. There really. you go. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. And there it was. I mean, Denny well, swears up and down there's a problem with Bubba's car. Well, he's of course he's going to say that. You know, I mean, Joey Logano during his his thing on Thursday, he's like, no, nah, that's exactly what's going on. He's like, but there's nothing you can do about it. It's it's the it's the rules in which we have to play in with this format you, know, you don't have all do this kind of format and they all do it don't think that uh, chevy was doing something that ford wouldn't have and hasn't pulled in their past either so it's just the way it works we'll be back fall has arrived but there's still time to get your landscaping complete before the snow flies and emf landscape supply in west bend has everything you need with fresh mulch arriving daily from premium hardwood mulch to hemlock and pine bark to enviro mulch in red gold chocolate brown and black color emf also has a large variety of decorative stone and granite as well as field stone topsoil and compost for all your landscaping needs visit pmf landscape supply 5470 river road in west bend Call 262-338-8800 or visit pmflandscape.com. Friends of racing for many years. PMF Landscape Supply in West Bend. As a growing manufacturing company, we needed security solutions. We chose Bonafide because of the services they offer, pricing, and trusted reputation. But it's their outstanding service and support that convinced us we made the right choice with Bonafide. When businesses need security, they contact Bonafide Security Solutions. From locks and alarms to safes and surveillance, we do it all. We are Bonafide. We protect what you value. For your free security survey, call us today or visit bonafidesafe.com. If you're a fan of our Wisconsin sports teams, here's the perfect podcast for you. The Larravee and LePay podcast with two Hall of Fame broadcasters. Wayne Larravee, the voice of the Green Bay Packers, and Matt LePay, the voice of Wisconsin Badgers football and men's basketball. Together, bringing you insights and guests talking Packers, Badgers, Brewers, Bucks, and more. Listen to the Larravee and LePay podcast. Available anytime on the iHeartRadio app or wherever you listen to podcasts. Presented by UW Credit Union. Here for every you. And welcome to the final segment of our uh, internet and podcast only event here today as uh, the Big 920 doing some NFL pregame stuff today. A couple of notes for you. Uh, They accidentally announced that Xfinity is going to return as sponsor of the Xfinity series. I don't know that that was supposed to have been slipped, but that came out of the press conference on the state of the sport message the other day. Uh, Matt McCall has been the crew chief for the number six car over at Roush freaking. (sighs) It it looks as though Keselowski is going to get himself a new crew chief. Matt's out, and uh, Dan, it sounds as though there's a, a pretty good rumor who's coming in. A lot of people say look for Jeremy Bowens to end up over there. I mean, he was there with Penske. I think he worked with Brad at Penske, too. Yeah, so that may be happening, that Bowens will be taken over. We don't know that. Um, all there's, all we are getting from our insiders is that there's another Ford person coming over there, and uh, and Bowens certainly does match that description, so maybe we'll see that. Um, Dan, uh, you had your uh, your ear to the pavement while you were in the truck garage the other day and you know of a couple of pending driver moves looks like a lot of movement in the toyota side and they get all those cattle uh kicked off by the 17 truck is that taylor gray moving up to gibbs next year taylor yep which will open up you know that truck there i don't think some movement in the toyota camp uh, i think dean thompson's on his way to the xfinity series 
maybe with Sam Hunt Racing. We'll see. Yep. And then uh, maybe Tony Bridinger comes back. Tory Bridinger to the truck series. And then uh, uh, I know, I, the name of Gio Rogero is getting kicked around a lot. He may have a truck ride in his future. We'll see. Gio coming to the trucks, huh? That's interesting stuff. I want to say happy birthday to a Hall of Famer and regular LTN re- listener Dave Watson today. Um, as we uh, did our picks at the start of the playoffs, uh, there was only one driver that all four of us agreed on, and that was uh, Reddick in the 45 car. Um, and uh, turns out that that part's okay. Uh, Brian and I uh, took uh, Byron, and uh, PJ and Dan both took Blaney. Not a one of us thought Logano was going to make it this far. Uh, Logano is uh, today sitting second uh, to, for starting to uh, Martin Truex. By the way, his last regular race, he's going to be in the next race at Daytona, okay? But this is his last uh, race uh, at least in that 19 car. He's qualified in at 134.741 at a 26.718 to get around. Uh, but Logano starts second. He's in a pretty good position. Byron will start eighth. Reddick starts 10th. And Ryan Blaney starts 17th, even though he may have the best piece of the bunch, right? Sure seems like it. That's what everybody is saying. And I don't know if he just he just messed up on his qualifying lap. I think he did. He got like a little in the first go around. Remember that? I think coming out. Yeah, of going two. In the, Yeah, he kind of saw it on the wheel pretty good. And but in the over in the average laps, you know, five, ten, fifteen, twenty, he's he's been leading right now. If you look at the overall season so far, if you throw your analytics in, they they give scores to to drivers for restarts and positions here and different issues. Uh, William Byron's got the best overall analytical score of the th- of the four. Well, I'm I'm gonna take him today. I think it's Byron's time. Uh, you know, uh, he certainly the Chevrolet is headed uh, for this championship. Although uh, Logano looks pretty good. I think if the four of us all said if we could pick one guy, it would be Tyler Reddick to win this thing today, wouldn't we? Oh, sentimentally, yes. I mean, I'd like to see. I'd love to see him win this race. I I just don't know. I. I I don't know if that team's ready to win a championship yet. You know, I mean, if the circumstances allow, maybe, but they just haven't been on kill all weekend. And sometimes you got to right. lose one to get a chance to win one. There you go. So that's where it almost looks all like. Right. To I, so I'm taking 24. You guys can either you can agree with me. There's only four drivers to pick from here. And let's, uh, uh, Dan, you you go next. Who are you looking? I think I'm gonna go with the 12 to be the first repeat champion in a while. Ah, and Brian, I. Been saying it since he since he locked himself in Joey Logano. I mean, as much as I, you know, <clears throat> my stomach's <laughs> gonna churn when I see him, you know, win another championship. The guy is just on kill, and uh, you give him a second chance, and he's gonna probably get it done. PJ, you're gonna have to agree with one of us because I don't think that that uh, 45 car is uh, gonna be in a position today. There was never a doubt in my mind who I was gonna pick. It's always gonna be Ryan Blaney. All right, well, two in a row for Blaney with the best car. So, yeah, that's he it, looked it, good, I think, in practice, too. Well, that guy looks good no matter what he does. Um, he was let's was, not just assume that's going to be the winner of the race either. I mean, we saw last year that these true. other guys, you know, Ross Chastain is starting third and he'll race you. And, you know, we talked with Jesse Saunders for quite a while yesterday, and Kyle Larson's got a good car, too. You know, so if those guys get up in front and some of these final four guys are a little bit farther back, they're not going to just let them by. Yeah. You know, I think we sh- we should have thanked Ty Majeski for winning the race too, because whoever wins the races here, this weekend, there's unless you're in the hunt for the championship, you kind of are an afterthought. No kidding! Sorry. And didn't that happen yesterday with Herbst? My God, they, they he had it coming. Know, the way he acted, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he acted like a little bit of a jag, but, you know. Uh, uh, Stuart Haas Racing's last race today. So, uh, if anybody, I think the 14 got a shot, but uh, we'll we'll have to watch. And Truex that. retiring, and he's on the Truex pole. Truex retiring, yeah, and starting on the pole for his last race. That's pretty cool, too, at least in the 19th. Hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, uh, even though it's not been the easiest thing to do on the Internet only today, Uh, The gang is all heading for the racetrack as soon as this program is over. So what we want everybody to remember is real race cars have doors, even if they do climb in through the windows. Let's Talk NASCAR is produced and directed by Dangerous Dan Margetta. Our engineer is Matt Losey for all of us. 
Let's have a good, safe race, and we'll talk to you next week, everybody. This program has come to you live from multiple locations via Skype. Any and all comments expressed on this show do not necessarily express the opinions of this station, its employees, or advertisers. Your comments are always welcome at mail at ltnradionetwork.com. Find us at facebook.com slash LTN Radio Network. And thank you for your support since 1985. Tune in again next Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time for the LTN Hour on the LTN Radio Network.